So can you do all things CNC related on a Mac? Yes, you can, and that is exactly what we are covering off in today's episode. Now, a while ago, I did a beginner's guide to CNC software, link will be up in the corner, where I talk about the different phases of software that you need and ultimately the different options in those phases. Definitely worth checking out if you are new to CNC. But the question still always comes up about Macs and what to do if you are trying to run from one of those. Now, we're gonna do this in reverse order. I'm gonna talk about the control software first, give you a few options that you can use on your Mac that are all free, I will add. We'll then move on to the design side and again, various options that will all run on your Mac natively. Then we're gonna finish off talking about Kafka and Vectric, two of the top names in CNC software and how you can get those also running on your Mac as well. So let's dive in. Control software. Now it doesn't matter if you have a small machine like the Carvera Air behind me, a medium machine like a Fox Alien or Saints Moth, maybe even a large machine like a long mill. They all require control software to run and operate them. Now fortunately on Macs there are lots of available options and also free ones as well, which is obviously great for us as the users. Now I'm going to list what I consider probably to be the best or the top three that I often see reference. So first we're going to start off with UGS, Universal G code sender. Now, this is open source software, and so basically means it's free, but also lots of people out there continue to chip in and develop it. It is my personal preference for various reasons. I'm not going to dive into that, but that is the first one. The second one I'm going to mention is Open Build Controller. Again, this is also free software and it has a nice interface to it. If you want to learn more about that particular piece of software, check out Seth CNC's video right up in the corner now. The third one I'm going to mention is G Sender. Again, another free piece of software that will run on your Mac. This was primarily designed to run obviously the Long Mill, which is their product, but ultimately it will run any Gerbil based machine. So those are three free options to control your CNC machine from your Mac. Design software, aka your CAD CAM software that is compatible with Macs. Let's start with Easel. Well, because Easel is actually the easiest place to start. It's where I tell a lot of beginners to go who are getting into CNC. My beginner's guide is actually linked up in the corner now. Easel has a very simple user interface that you can go in and start to understand how creating shapes and toolpaths work in relation to drawing them out versus actually being shown on a 3D model in front of you. So as I say, it's a nice way to start to get into this type of software. Its downside in the same breath is also its simplicity. It has limited tools and functions. So basically, a lot of users do progress beyond its capabilities fairly quickly. In terms of the cost of the software, there is a small portion of it that is available for free, and you can start to get it in and do some very basic designs. But once you start to require some of its other tools and features, you have to start paying for it. And that is at a cost of $24 per month. Now, in my opinion, $24 is a a lot for the limited tools and functions you actually get in the software itself, especially when we're going to talk about some of the other software that we'll be moving on to shortly. Now, the reason Easel can run on a Mac is ultimately because it runs in an internet browser. So effectively, anywhere that you can get the internet, you can, in theory, run Easel. But that is also the problem as well, is if you don't have internet in your workshop or something, Easel's not going to be the solution for you, or you'd end up having to design in a place that has Easel, and then obviously, I don't know, put the code on a memory card to take back to your machine. Let's move on to Carboid Create. Now, in comparison to Easel, the good thing about Carboid Create is it doesn't require the internet. It is a standalone piece of software, so that is one benefit to it. In terms of its usability, it is fairly easy and comfortable to get to use with. It has some extra features that Easel doesn't. I would probably say it's intermediate software, if that makes sense, in terms of its functions and capabilities that can be done with it. In terms of the cost, there used to be a free version that was available. You can still get the link to this. It is Carboy Create V6, and you may still find the link on their website, but they moved fully over to paid software now. And in terms of the cost of that, it's either $120 per year on subscription or $360 if you want to buy it as a perpetual license. Now, if you're not sure what the difference there is, 
paying for something on subscription means you continually get the updates as they're released. If you buy something as a perpetual license, it's a one-off payment, but you don't really get any updates beyond that, I think, after the first year. So there is a bit of a trade-off to it, but ultimately it's, it has the options there for both type of users. Number three, let's talk about Fusion 360. Now, if you're familiar with 3D modeling software, this will already be on your radar. It is a ridiculously powerful piece of software that can do so much in it around the 3D world simulator models, but ultimately it can still be used for CAD and CAM work as well. Now the downside is because it is so powerful, the learning curve for it is actually quite steep. You almost have to understand how Fusion 360 works before you can actually do the CAD CAM software design that we need for the CNC work. So it's kind of one of those things. If you know how to use Fusion, definitely use it. If you already have an interest in that sort of area, definitely use it. But if you're quite new to CNC and you're struggling with software, this is not the one for you because say it's quite a complex process to learn how to use it. The upside to Fusion 360 is it's actually free for personal use. They sometimes try and hide where the link is actually on their site for personal use, but I'll probably put one down in the description area below to make life easier for you to find it. And fourth, we'll talk about Desk Proto World conveniently because it's really good at fourth axis work. Now, I only came across this software last year um, when I needed to do a bit of a design modeling for the Science Mark 3030 Pro fourth axis. And actually, I found it really intuitive and easy to get into. So it is a nice layout, fairly simple to start to understand. And in terms of the cost of the software, there is an entry level that is free. And I think it progresses up to three or four different layers. Obviously, each time you progress up in the price range there are more tools and features added and if you wanted for example the full package that includes the fourth axis i think that is around eight to nine hundred dollars so it's about understanding what tools you want versus the cost and obviously then you make the necessary purchase for that so those are four options that you can use on a Mac. They're not the only four that you can use. There are others as well but as I say those are just the four that I have used and know will definitely work on a Mac. And finally, onto Carveco and Vectric or VCarve. Now, as I said earlier in the video, these are the top two brands in terms of CNC CAD CAM software. I am a Carveco user. I do appreciate Vectric is out there. And on the different levels of the packages, they can each do different things that the other one cannot. However, what neither of them actually do is produce a version for Mac. So how did I get Carveco installed on this Mac? Well, let me explain. Now the way around this is you run your software within Windows on your Mac. Now there are two ways to do this. Both are very easy, but both have pros and cons. And I'll run through those in a second, but two quick things I need to mention. First is I'm not a Mac expert. This isn't even my Mac. I've had to borrow it from a friend. Thank you very much, Rahit. The second thing is customer support for both of these software packages will support you as far as they possibly can. But ultimately, if you run into any issues that are directly related as running on this on a Mac, obviously they may not be able to help you there. So do just bear that in mind before you progress down either of these routes. So the two options to achieve this are Bootcamp or Parallels. Now, when I say Parallels, there are alternatives out there but Parallels is likely to be the most common one that you'll come across, which is why I'm doing it in this scenario. Now, the differences between the two of them is when you use Bootcamp, you are essentially have your Mac software and you're going to install Windows alongside it. So they both operate independently and you can switch between one or the other. Now, in the parallel side of things, what you're doing is creating a Windows environment inside of your Apple environment. So one essentially sits within the other. Now, in terms of the pros and cons, well, Bootcamp is free and obviously that is a great cost saving. It doesn't cost you anything and it will apply to most Macs. However, the downside is if you have a Mac with an M1, 2 or 3 chip, it will not work on that. That is the plus side to the Parallels approach is that Parallels will work on those machines with M1, 2 or 3 chips. But the downside is Parallels does cost money. I think it is an annual charge as well. I want to say $99 off the top of my head. That may not be correct. Now, coming back to the Bootcamp side, the advantage to Bootcamp is that it does run independently, as I said, from your Mac operating software. So there sort of shouldn't be any type of clashes as a result of that. The downside is, 
you can't fluently switch between them. And what I mean by that is because Parallels runs within your Apple software, you can open Windows up, for example, copy something, and then go back over to Apple and paste it in there. So there's a little bit more of an interaction between them. But the downside to that point is if any approach is going to develop some sort of bug, it's likely to be the Parallels approach. Essentially, Boot Camp is likely to be a bit more stable than running Parallels or one of its other versions of it. So I guess my general advice would be that if you have the option to use Boot Camp, do that because it is likely to be more stable and it is free. But if you have no choice and have to go down the Parallels, well, that's not bad either because there are some plus points to doing that. And if you are planning to go down the route of Carveco or Vetric and want an easier way to get started with lots of project files, definitely check out cncwithme.com. I'm an instructor over there. There are weekly project files coming out with all the different tutorials. There are live Q&A sessions. There's hangouts with other instructors. It's a really great community and the code James Dean Designs will get you 15% off. So there you are. We have covered the software that you can run your CNC machine with and also that you can do your CAD can work with. Now I will put as many links as I can down in the description area below for all the software that we have covered. But if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe if not done so already. Thank you all very much for watching and final thanks as always goes to my patrons. I'll see you all on the next episode.